Hi everyone, David Maley here and today I'm going to show you some really cool things in Excel called spark lines. I'm going to show you how to use them with general sales data and in other ways. And what's really cool is you can actually take it and use it for forecasting too. So let me show you some really cool stuff here. So right here I have another car dealership, local car dealerships uh, data here. And this dealership has 24 salespeople. I've got them as R1 through R24. The, that's their uh, I'm not going to put their names on here and stuff. And uh, so there they are there. And then across here you have weeks. One, two, three, four, five. This is 2017 data again like the other one that I just did. But this is a different dealership. has more salespeople to it. Now when you come across this way and you go all the way to the end. So we got week 52 coming up here. I've got a couple extra columns here. This one is weekly average. Which I've shown you how to do this before is basically a sum divided by 52 for all those. Uh, monthly average, I've shown you how to do this before. It's uh, basically you take the weekly average and then you multiply it by 4.348 or thereabouts, depending on what site you look at on the internet. That's the uh, average um, number of weeks in a month. And uh, so when you take all the months in the year into account, that's the number you get. So now we have these three columns over here called Sparkline Column, Sparkline, and Win Loss. So when you're looking at a data set, you go to Insert here on Excel. And then what you do is you go over here, and there's this little area next to the filters, next to slicers and timelines. I've shown you how to do those, called Sparklines. And there's Line, Column, and Win Loss. Those are your choices there. Now you'll see these down here a little bit messy looking and that's because I used a whole year that's 52 weeks, 52 data points um, in each and it's really not meant for that as you can see here. I mean it, I guess maybe this one, the spark line, you can kind of look at it but it's really kind of messy to look at. But this is the spark line if I use that one um, and then when you go inside them, so if I click on one of these and you click on design you can go in here and I've selected high point, low point. You can pick marker color, you know, to differentiate negative points if you want by different colors, make them purple, whatever you want to do. So I've put high points, low points. And again, this is the sparkline column. So if I go back here, you can see it here. Sparkline, this is the column one here. The line one is this one. And this one is the win loss, which will show you ups and downs or positives versus negatives. But again, that's too many data points. Got 52 data points in here. So what I've done is I've taken a subset of this. Okay, I'm going to bring it down here so where it gets really interesting. So I took these weeks right here, weeks one through five, same sales reps, and see how it looks much cleaner now. Now we're looking at a spark line, a win loss, and a spark line column. And so from this, you can quickly see how your sales reps are doing on a monthly basis because basically a month's going to have four or five weeks in it. In this case, I took five. It could be four. And then it depends on your accounting methods and what you do. But if you did this, you could quickly pinpoint you know, who started off the month great and who's ending it on a very low note, like this one right here, R16. Um, who's doing okay? Who's doing better at the end? This guy's obviously started bad, one per week and then six and four. Um, here's one ending with a nine, a high note. We got all kinds of them in here. We got some that have some high sales, and we got then we have a zero in between. Maybe they took that week off. I don't know. I don't have that information. Negatives, uh, like here's a negative one. That means that they had, or here and here's one too, and here's a couple here. That means that they had a deal that the financing fell through, or uh, for whatever reason the car was returned. Um, they, they company came the bank came back and said they were didn't want to loan to them whatever it was um, they didn't have the down payment they said they would have the you know in time for the month end close what or the week or whatever it was or it could be a buy uh, it could be anything regardless um, so that's how you have negatives in there but there here you see the spark line it's got the same setup okay so if you come in here you know, high point, low point. Now it gives you two points instead of a bunch of points all across. Maybe three points. If it's got low point and a couple highs. But what's nice is you can quickly see who's doing well, who's not, who's trending well in the month, who's trending downward, who's trending upward. You can also see that backed up by the win loss. Okay, so this guy's got you know four good notes, four good points, and one bad low. Okay, this guy's doing okay. He's about the same all the way throughout. But that's not necessarily the case because if you look at this, 
He's really not one of the top salespeople, 94641. Maybe we got to look at it. Maybe he is. I don't know. We'll have to look at it and compare them all. But if you look at this, you, you want to have more than one point. So you look at that, then you look at this, and you say, oh, wait a minute. We have a uh, lower value here, and we got a red here. So we you want to look at these together and see where you end up. Now, what's really nice is from this, you can go into this. And then I'm going to do another one over here, and I'm going to show you something really cool. Okay, so down below I have all these to the total. So it's the total per week average. Okay, and this one here, unlike these guys above it, this bottom one here gives me the average for every sales rep. And this one here and this one do the same thing. So overall, with my sales reps, I'm doing pretty good if that was my sales reps. And then what I've done is I've gone here and I've gotten the temperature for each of these weeks. And I know that temperature is extremely well correlated with sales in fields like uh, in most sales related uh, niches. So this is from car sales from a car dealership. It's very related to that. So if the days are extremely hot, fewer people come in. If these days are normal, a lot of people come in. If it rains, they tend to stay away. And if it's very cold, you don't see a lot of people come in. So it's pretty well correlated. So if you look here, we've got temperature for week one, temperature for week two, temperature for week three, four, and five. We already know those. We also know up here I could get you know week six and week seven and week eight. Well, I want to show you forecasting with spark lines and stuff here. So we've got those are the knowns. So you can go on the internet and go and look backwards and, and you can get forecasts. You can get forecasts going forward from weather.com, places like that, weather underground. You can also go to places to if you want to play with this kind of data and look at the past years. This is 2017 data up here. This is 2017 data, and so is this. But what I'm doing is I went and looked at the forecasted and the uh, past temperature days, and here's the actual temperatures. So what I want to do is pr give you a forecast here based on this. Now this is using linear uh, regression, which is built into uh, Excel. It's very simple to use. So what you do here is you have to have coming into it two different uh, arrays. So the arrays are one is going to be your temperature coming in, these guys right here, and you'll see them built into here. So you have J through N, that's these, they're right here at the end. The middle one is built off of the previous one, so for that row would be these guys right here. And you can see them right there. And keep in mind, you want to make sure that it goes correctly. So you'll see that I have the dollar signs in here, so it stays in this row. It doesn't go down to the next row when I do this. It stays with these. These, on the other hand, do not have both dollar signs in there. So they're on the one side. It'll stay in the B column, but it'll go down because there's not the second dollar sign in there. So that's how that works. So this will give me a linear line based on the uh, weeks here 1 through 5 and the temperatures here 1 through 5 and then the first one here this is 059 which is this guy right here which is our forecast okay so that's how you would go forward with a forecast and I have five uh, forecast temps here based on that so then these five weeks here will be based on these five in this uh, formula right here so you bring those in and this is the temperatures that I get then what I can do is I can actually go and test these I can go right above and say like that first one is for week six is 1.9 now we're not gonna be 100 percent accurate here and I understand that it's linear so week six is eight versus I've got one well we're way off there for that guy uh, but then we got 5.4 he's got 12 um, 4.9, 1.9, 2.3. Well, he's closer on week nine, but he's pretty far off. But that's okay. It happened. It's again, this is linear regression. Linear regression is basically a straight line. It doesn't take into account seasonality and some other things. So there are other uh, methods you can use than just linear uh, regression for forecasting. But um, I just want to show you how it's done quickly and then the cool thing is now these are individuals versus the bottom is the actual overall so it'd be more interesting to see what now I didn't do the overall here I could have and then we could compare this to that and that would probably get a lot closer 
because as you go into just individuals you will have a lot of variance you'll have somebody that's gone for a day or takes two weeks off and somebody else that sells like gangbusters for two weeks out of nowhere because his relatives all come in you'll have things like that happen but what's really neat with these spark lines is right next to it now you can see the actual forecast for all these people graphed for that time period of those five weeks weeks uh, six seven eight nine and ten so I have FC for forecast week um, and then at the bottom here, remember again, we're taking the last column here takes the average for all of them. So it averages all the sales reps. So you're getting more numbers, more data, and it's going to be much more accurate. So that's your whole group, their average across them. And here's what they're doing. Their average. So some people, actually the guy right above, basically falls right in line with this, with the group average. Some of them are complete the opposite, and some of them, again, fall right in with it. But that's what spark lines do. So spark lines are very simple to use. You just go up here, uh, go to uh, insert, and uh, you put them in. And you so when you're building it, even like over here, when you click on this, you just you put you click on the spark line you want. Then it'll ask you for the date range you want, and or the time series range. And then what you would do is for that first one, I would just copy from week one all the way across just like you're swapping for a pivot chart all the way to 52 or you can put in the uh, range if you want which would be B2 to what BA2 or BA3 I'm sorry and uh, then uh, once you select that and you've selected the pivot chart or the uh, spark lines that you want it'll put it in and then you can just go in there and uh, decide okay I want to um, customize this a little bit I want uh, see so hit design you can have first point, last point, high point, low point, negative points, marker color. You can even change the color of it. You could change it to green, to blue, to whatever you want. And uh, But keep in mind, when you're using data, you want to have fewer data points. So maybe like a month's worth of data. Um, you don't want to have 100 data points and then draw out some charts. Because look at the difference. This is pretty simple and easy to use and look at. If I go over here, look at these. That's kind of a little bit messy, and it's really, you know, hard to tell what it is, for, and it's really not that pretty. So you definitely want to go and stick with lower, uh, a lower data range, you know, four, five, six, maybe ten data points. That's about it. You don't want to go beyond that with uh, spark lines. But it's a cool way to show data inside of the row, okay, inside the row. It, instead of just having all the rows shown in a graph outside of it, this actually puts it inside each row and it's just kind of cool to do, to use and then you can use it to compare back and forth you can compare it to your totals you can do all kinds of cool stuff with it but in here we showed you how to use spark lines all of them every attribute of them how to load them in where to use them and uh, you know even some forecasting some cool ideas and techniques here linear regression works wonderful for some things some things it may not because you have to take seasonality into account so seasonality is you know you've got months and areas where you got better sales than others and it, it, it depends on your niche it depends on what you're selling it, it could be a lot of different things but this is a great way to look at forecasts of different things and to look at data and see it in the rows as it moves through you know uh, sets or through weeks and through time series so thanks again for watching please subscribe and like you, I got, I've got a lot of other great videos on my channels that you're gonna like on my channel that you're gonna like and uh, we've just covered all kinds of great stuff in Excel, R, ggplot, all tricks, you name it, we're gonna be putting it on there. And uh, this is stuff that I use every day in data analysis and data science. So thanks again for watching. Please subscribe and like and have a great day.